The polls show the majority of Americans think Barack Obama does not deserve to keep his job as president of the United States. According to the survey, only 39 percent say Obama deserves to be re-elected, but 54 percent believe he should be a one-term president. Obama is fighting to win public support, and the White House is expected to step up its re-election effort shortly after the midterm elections. The rising unemployment figures are overshadowing all government activities. Polls show more than half the American people are unhappy with the way Obama is handling the economy. Polling firms say people want to feel the change in real life, not just read about it in the paper. The survey from Gallup shows the government will have to do a lot to boost voter confidence in two years. Well, to discuss President Obama's plummeting popularity, we're being joined by Edward Spanis. He's with the Executive Intelligence Review in Washington. Many thanks for joining us here on Press TV, sir. Now, Obama ranks on the low end of comparable averages among the nine presidents since Eisenhower, but is similar to recently elected presidents such as Carter, Reagan, and Clinton. What does that translate into in real terms for Obama's presidency? Well, I think that it's different than the other presidents because we are in the United States and worldwide in the worst economic collapse in history. And this is what's fueling the anger at Obama and at the government. And Obama is incapable of dealing with this financial crisis. In fact, he is, he is a failed president and he's a failed, uh, failed personality. And there is actually discussion in Washington right now and within the government of using the 25th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution to remove Obama from office. That amendment allows for removing a president who was incapacitated either physically or mentally. And in this case, Obama is mentally uh, incapable of fulfilling the office of president right now. Right now, in fact, though Clinton was in a similar position in 94, he won his second term with a higher margin than George W. Bush, who at this point was doing well, but won a second term with a very narrow margin. Should Obama take a comfort in knowing that? No, I don't, I don't think he, he can. Uh, they were very different people. Uh, Bill Clinton was uh, a very good president. He was a very intelligent president. Uh, Obama is neither of those. Uh, there's no way that his presidency can be salvaged at this point. And it doesn't really make any difference who wins the congressional elections. Uh, Obama is, is finished now as, as president. And the best thing for him and for the country would be for him to be removed. And you may have noticed that he's spending all his time traveling around the country campaigning. And White House insiders say that he's very depressed when he's in the White House. He's very unhappy. He does not like governing. He likes campaigning. He likes the crowds. He likes the applause. But this is very dangerous when we're in the kind of crisis that the nation and the world faces right now. Right now, Obama came in with a position of change and of being the first black president. So do these dismal numbers, the expected midterm loss and the divisiveness now prevalent in the U.S. speak of this being a unique and maybe low point in the history of U.S. politics as a whole? No, I don't think so. I don't think it has anything to do with, with his race. Uh, the problem is he was not qualified to be president in the first place. Uh, and he was, he was put in there precisely because he would act as a puppet. And he would, they knew he would be a puppet for Wall Street, for the London financiers, and for the British. Uh, it has nothing to do with, with his background, nothing to do with his race. The fact is that he is in, he's a failed personality. He's, he's a narcissist. He has a huge ego. Uh, and he's incapable of governing. And that's very dangerous uh, for the country, and you really don't have any precedent in recent history for this type of situation. The best thing would be for him either to step aside or to be removed so that we could go about uh, organizing a recovery from this collapse. All right, we're going to have to leave it there. That was Edward Spanis with the Executive Intelligence Review speaking to us from Washington. Many thanks indeed for your insights here on Press TV, sir.